I came across this video of these guys, like these this police officers raiding a house. Okay, so it's like a cold country where there's lots of snow, but there's snow in every house except this one house. So these police officers figured, okay, these guys must be growing weed because they have so much heat that there's no snow on this house. And when they went in the house, they broke in. It turns out they weren't like growing weed, but they were illegally mining Bitcoin. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> so I found that to be really interesting. Yeah. Interesting. So let me ask illegally you. Illegally mining Bitcoin. Like, why is it illegal in the first place? I will not understand, but okay. Why is it illegal? Do you know the answer? The countries that ban it don't want anyone to have it. So they don't want the guys to get any Bitcoin from mining. So they make the act of mining itself illegal. Okay. It's like a way to like prevent people from getting Bitcoin. Is it like that in India right now? No. But in India, like... It, most people would not mine Bitcoin because electricity here is really expensive. It would make no sense. Plus, India is a hot country. So you have to not only like buy electricity at sky high prices, but then also pay for cooling. Mm -hmm. I would say countries like Russia, Canada are like well suited for Bitcoin mining because they are so cold that you don't have to pay for cooling. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's I didn't know about significantly that. cut costs. Mm -hmm. So there's this hardware element involved as well that you, you need to factor in. Yeah, that's that's the biggest cost, right? The actual mining hardware. But the electricity is also a big factor because that's what decides whether you're profitable in the moment or not. Like if you're spending more on electricity to generate Bitcoin, which are not worth at the price of electricity, then you're losing money, then you might as well just shut off the operation. Mm -hmm. And one way to cut down on electricity spend is essentially not have to cool the, the gig. The rig, if you can keep it cold without spending electricity, your costs will come way down. And that's why countries like Canada or Russia are really, really well situated to be like the leading Bitcoin miners because they're so cold. In terms of mining, do you see these big players forming? where everyone's just pulling their resources. Well, there, there's only a few winners while everyone else is it's not even worth it to mine. We are already here. Like this already happened here. like five, six years ago, you could say. Hmm. Interesting. So there's something called ASIC, like, which is called Application Specific Integrated Circuit, which does SHA-1 hashes really, really fast. And it's like your computer can, I'm going to like just throw random numbers here. Let's say your computer calculates 500 hashes per second, okay? A graphics card might say work 100x as fast, so it might calculate 50,000 hashes per second. But an ASIC would be something like, you know, 50 million hashes a second. So your computer is like essentially can't compete. Mm. So we are in a situation where mining in Bitcoin is essentially controlled by a very few number of players like Bitmain, et cetera, who are so big and they have, they're, they're, they're the guys who are manufacturing these ASICs, by the way. That's, it's, it's impossible for other players to compete. Like there's like a couple of guys who are like the mining community, you could say. And it's just like a few people. It isn't like a large number of people. Would Bitcoin you say mining is, is really centralized. Bitcoin? What? Would you say this is a good thing for Bitcoin that it's slowly becoming more centralized? I would not say this is Bitcoin becoming centralized. These guys are just miners. The thing is that miners don't make the rules. They just mine Bitcoin. The mm -hmm. nodes set the rules. So the nodes are decentralized and that's what matters. It doesn't matter if mining is more centralized, but I mean, there are, this is like, I'm giving you a very low nuance answer. There are more nuances here where Miners can censor transactions now. They can front run transactions in Ethereum. They can be like, okay, so these UTXOs can't be spent or things of that sort. They can like, do private deals. And so, yeah, there are, there are bad sides to mining being centralized. However, most of the bad sides are actually coming from the fact that Bitcoin is an open ledger. And I, I think Monero is a good solution for this where 
the ledger is opaque. So you, you don't actually get any advantage by having a centralized miner. Like if you even get centralized mining, it doesn't really matter because the chain is private. So you can't, like, like when I say private, I mean like it's opaque. So you don't really have any extra information to hurt or benefit someone or yourself. Okay. Just back to that last question. Imagine hypothetically, just the dark world, the miners, they're becoming highly political and they choose one side. Do they have power to sway any transactions a certain way for political ideologies that they don't agree with? So they can't sway transactions. Like they can't be like, I'm going to spend someone else's money. That can't happen. And they can't be like, okay, so I'm not going to allow you to spend X, Y, Z money and do you know things like that. But they can't, like, actually, wait, let me rephrase that. They can't spend your money and they can't like change the rules and everyone. However, if there is a centralized group of miners, they can do things like essentially prevent you from transacting. Like if you can make a transaction, but they can like decide to not include your transaction ever. Like no matter what happens, I'm going to ignore Armand's transaction. I'm not going to put it in a block. I'm not going to mine your transaction. So that is a that's an issue with Bitcoin essentially because Bitcoin is an open ledger. Like you can see what UTXO is being spent and what UTXO it's being sent to. So if I know that these are Arman's UTXOs, I can decide to not let you spend your UTXOs. For example, let's say that you are some kind of advocacy group and you publish your Bitcoin address publicly. So you have these UTXOs and publicly it's known that this is where, you know, these are Arman's addresses. And then when you try to spend it, these guys can be like, we're not gonna mine your transaction. So your Bitcoin are essentially stuck and this problem is not like it, you could say it's from the centralized mining, but I would say the root cause of the problem is the fact that these guys can tell what UTXO is being spent. So this lack of privacy thing is why this is happening in a cryptocurrency like Monero. They can't really tell what you know which output is being spent and who it's being sent to and how much money is being sent. So they can't really do these types of nonsense. Now with Monero, Monero, is there still that issue with electricity and cooling and all of that, or is it completely different to Monero coin? It is completely different because Bitcoin has the way it's mined is called SHA-1, which is a very simple hash, which can be automated, not automated, I mean, which can be put in an ASIC, like an application specific integrated circuit which can perform computations like millions and millions of times or even billions of times faster than regular computers that you and I have. With Monero, the mining algorithm is called Kryptonite. And I think they changed it right now to become something called SpiderX. Mm -hmm. And this, these algorithms are specifically designed to not be able to be put into an ASIC. So you can't monopolize it. Like anyone can mine it. Like you can mine Monero from your computer and there is no monopoly here because th there is no ASIC possible. And if an ASIC becomes possible, they just change the mining algorithm. So it's a part of the ethos of this cryptocurrency where they don't want it to be centralized mining. So if, say, in the future, they find a way to make an ASIC for Spider X, which was really, really hard, by the way, the ASIC can be rendered useless and your billions or millions of investment that you made in figuring out how to make an ASIC for this will go to zero because in an instant, these guys will like switch to a different algorithm or come up with something new. Mm -hmm. Do you know what for I mean? Monero. So, for Monero, yes. So Monero, Monero is like much more decentralized than Bitcoin is in terms of mining. Would you say that makes Monero more of the priced currency over Bitcoin in the future? Yes. This prediction? Technologically speaking, Monero is superior to Bitcoin. Technologically speaking. However, Bitcoin is well known and it has other advantages, you know, like simplicity itself is an advantage. What's more simple, so, Bitcoin or Monero? 
Bitcoin is much, much more simple because it's like a plain ledger, right? They don't employ any privacy technologies. It's like UTXO being spent, the amount being spent, and the person that is being sent to mm-hmm. can all be seen on the blockchain. So it's essentially no privacy, but it has other advantages. Like you can actually know there are 21 million Bitcoin by counting them out. Like how okay. much money was sent to who, and you can like know how much money do people actually own. And you can know as a guarantee that this is the amount of crypto, this is the amount of Bitcoin that is actually that ex- actually exists without having any doubts or without trusting anyone. But with something like Monero, where you don't know how much money is being transacted and you just have guarantees based on the encryption algorithms, like the algorithm will verify that the amount being spent from an UTXO is less than, sorry, is greater than or equal to the amount actually being received by the other UTXO. Like the amount I'm spending and the amount the other person is getting are matching, but we don't know what the amount is. Like you can't like just look at the ledger and tell that, okay, so five monitor was sent from X to Y. Mm-hmm. What you can like know for sure is that some amount of monitor was taken from X and the same amount of Monero was sent to Y, including the transaction fee, et cetera. So you essentially are trusting the encryption and the technology to verify this for sure. But say there was a bug, let's say that there was something wrong with the encryption technology being used. And you could say, be like, send four Monero, but the other guy gets five Monero. Mm-hmm. But because the amounts are invisible, like how does anyone else know? So you have to trust the to- the technology that's being used by Monero, in this case called Ring CT, Ring Confidential Transactions, that the amount being sent by one person and the amount being received tally up. But you have no simple way of actually just counting out the, co- the money anyone has, which you can do with Bitcoin. So gotcha. there are things like this. So Monero has more technology, it adds more privacy, but the fact that it's private takes a lot of things away from it as well, which Bitcoin has because of its simplicity. Like you can trust there are so many, so many Bitcoin because you can actually count them. With Monero, you can actually, you can only inspect the algorithms being used, but you can't really tell, you know, if there, if there was no, if you can't be sure there are no bugs. Okay, so there's pros and cons on both sides. You're sold on Monero uh, because I'm it, sold on both. I have you're both. sold on both, uh, but but now because Monero isn't something that I mean, consider me an outsider to the Bitcoin community. I mean, I don't stay updated with all of this stuff. So in terms of the general public, Monero is something that some people may have heard of, but it's not as big yet. Uh, would you say it's becoming bigger, or do you think its complexity is going to keep it niche down? I would say that the markets are too unsophisticated right now to actually make sense in the sense that, you know, the markets where the way crypto markets are today mm-hmm. is essentially monkey see monkey do where people have heard of Bitcoin, <laughs> so they buy Bitcoin, people have heard of Ethereum, so they buy Ethereum. And there is no consideration of what these coins are actually doing. Like people don't know what Ethereum is, but they still buy it. For Likewise, people know. don't know what Dogecoin is, but because it's like a funny thing, people will buy it. So it's like monkey see, monkey do, and dumb money. There's a lot of dumb money in Bitcoin right now. And most people don't know anything about crypto, much less things like Monero. So right now, it's just like valuations or market caps are how well known your currency is. That's it. Like it's not about technology. It's like, is this well known or not? Wow. Well, you know a lot about this, Arsh. So, I mean, I'm assuming that not only do you play around with this, like this is something that you love for you to be this well informed in it. I mean, there has to be some love there, right? I built the number one free cryptocurrency course on the internet. It's on teachyourselfcrypto.com. And yeah, man, I think this stuff is going to change the world. Okay. So, I mean, this it doesn't feel like work learning about this. It really doesn't. It's a lot of fun. And this is the future. Like this is this is like learning how to code in the year 1995. Like it's so early and this is the future. Like anyone who was doing this in 1995, like could tell like this is the future. 
But people outside it were like, this is a fad. It's going to go away. So we are at that point. I really enjoy it, Harsh, when someone finds something that is congruent to them. They can articulate it in an easy way. Where I, I was helping this uh, one individual with a negotiating recently where he wanted to get a raise. And he was asking for a lot of money. And I don't want to hurt his spirits or anything. But in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, dude, you're not going to get that much money in this economy, especially because you're working for such a small company. Anyways, I mean, he did get a raise, but it wasn't to his satisfaction. And that's when he began to start questioning his life. He just turned 32. And he's thinking, okay, do I stay in this company or do I actually pursue my passion and this guy has always loved real estate like when he talks about real estate he gets so excited and he'll articulate some of the most complex topics in some of the easiest ways and as we're talking you could tell that he wants to invest this part of his life 32 on forward more into real estate so him not getting the raise that he wanted surprisingly gave him more direction into what he did want. So uh, the, the reason I bring that up is because as you're talking about Bitcoin, I sense the same enthusiasm that this guy got with real estate. Interesting. Do you have any thoughts on cryptocurrencies? Like, what are your thoughts? Well, I mean, I, I, I seeing it as a currency, I mean, it's something that... Uh, I mean, I don't know much about it, man. <laughs> I don't even have a response for that. I see. I'll put it like this. If I had to explain it in a simple sentence, like what is Bitcoin? Mm -hmm. See, if you, the way we have money right now, right? It's like printed notes. Mm -hmm. If you create a system of money that's not printed notes, like that's like actual gold or something that has value, how would you do it? The way you would do it is by coming up with something that can be exchanged from person to person, but can't be double spent. And I'll give you what I mean. I'll give you, I'll tell you what I mean by this. Okay. Let's say that I email you a picture. Mm -hmm. You have that picture and I have that picture. I can email this picture to someone else as well. So that's why images and email can't make money. Because they, they can't be money because the because of the fact that I don't lose the picture by sending it to someone else. Like I still retain the picture and I can send that picture to you know, five people. Mm -hmm. So that's the issue with creating a digital form of money. The way this issue is generally solved is by involving a third party, like some middleman. In right. most cases, these are banks. So you have money in the bank the bank, other person has an account with the bank as well. If you want to pay someone else, the bank will take from your account and add it to their account. Did you follow me here? Yeah, but you, you, your boy doesn't trust the banks. No, that's not my point. My point is no, that there, just... there, there is a central authority, okay? Now, ever since the internet was a thing, people have been trying to find a way to digitalize currency Let's say that you want to transact in gold. So there was a company called eGold. And what they would do is they would like have gold in their sellers mm -hmm. and give you like slips. Like, you know, like they would allow you to transact with people as like a bank. Like, okay, so I have gold in my seller. You can have an account with me and other people can also have an account with me. And then you can pay people in gold using me as like the party, like as a bank. Right. Now what happens is that Governments are crazy, right? Governments don't like any kind of competition. So mm -hmm. they would legislate these companies out or these companies would essentially scam customers and run away with the money, etc. So the problem with having currencies is that there is a centralized person who decides what transactions are happening and that centralized person gets targeted. Mm -hmm. Like in case of your central bank or in the US, it's called the Federal Reserve. Yeah. that's essentially like a trusted third party and the third party is printing money on everyone else. So it's like, we're trusting you to hold our money, but you're printing so much money that the value of the money we have is going down because you are abusing your power. You could say. 
Mm-hmm. So how can we come up with a system of money that is controlled by no one and is entirely digital? We can't use images because like I said, like if I send you an image, I still have the copy of my image. I can send it to other people. I can double spend this money and we will not know which image is the actual money anymore. Mm-hmm. So Bitcoin is essentially a way to send something digitally where if I send it to someone, I lose the Bitcoin and they get it. And there is no central party controlling it. It's decentralized. Did you understand? Yes, I did understand. Repeat what you understood. Well, man, this is going to take a while. But the main thing is that there's a ledger where you can be transparent and what the... Man, I, I can't explain it, but I know what you're talking about. Okay, I'll put it in like even simpler terms, okay? Yeah. This is a way to digitally send someone something, but mm-hmm. when you send it to them, you lose it and they get it instead of both of you having it. And this is not like, and the way this is done is not through a centralized third party. Like you don't have to trust anyone. Like this is a decentralized system. Mm-hmm. So there is no one else involved here. Like it's it's a decentralized system and you can take something from yourself and give it to someone else. Yes. And that's valuable, right? Mm-hmm. Like the it fact valuable, that you can transfer it decentralized in itself is valuable. Yeah, and I mean, it brings back more power to the people because, I mean, you brought up the whole Federal Reserve. I mean, to this day, uh, a lot of individuals still don't know what they do. So we don't know. We can't put a face to a organization. I mean, they could just print money willy-nilly. I mean, it was bound to happen this way bringing more power to the people. 